Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. We got this really awesome 2005 Toyota Land Cruiser in the shop today. And we're also going to visit an unfortunate but all too common scenario in shops across America today, right after this. This here is the J100 platform, which in the North American market was only offered with the 4.7 V8, or a V8 model, to put it that way. They actually made these from 98 to 2007, and after 07 they went to a much more modern version of this. There's also kind of a brother or sister, I don't know how you want to look at it, to this. It would be the Lexus LX470. They also had the LX450, the earlier models. It's basically a glammed up Land Cruiser. But these are some of the best SUVs, the most durable SUVs that you can buy. If you're going into the Sahara, if you're going to Australia, if you're going into the Outback, you don't want to take a, a Denali or a Suburban or a, a H2. They won't last a week, guys. They will be destroyed. This is what you want to take in those scenarios. Or, my favorite, a Land Rover Discovery or a Series Land Rover or possibly a Land Rover Defender 110 or something like that. But the absolute best durability and longest service life while being able to handle the severe conditions of those countries I just mentioned or those places, this is your ticket right here, a Land Cruiser. They've had Toyota Land Cruiser since 1951. They've been around for a long time. Some of the earlier models, like the FJ80, I think it is, they're getting to be very expensive and very collectible now. If you watch any of your favorite National Geographic or Discovery Channel and watch any of the nature shows, they're not going into the middle of nowhere in these severely rugged terrains in Ford Explorers. Like I said, they won't last. They'll be destroyed. This is what they're taking. We're going to put this on a lift here in a little bit and check it out and let you guys do a check over with me. But it's actually here for a reason today. The customer hears a noise. He's concerned about an issue going on with the engine. I'll go ahead and drive this thing forward over to the lift. You guys can listen to the motor while it's running up there and we'll get it lifted in the air. So as you guys listened, as it was driving forward, you noticed it had a low rumbling noise, almost like it's got an exhaust system on it. Also, when it's sitting idling, it's like a metallic tapping or a knocking that's going on. The customer's concerned that there's engine damage. He thinks it may possibly need head gaskets or major internal problem inside the engine. And he wants a quote before we go any further, but he's, he's kind of thinking that that's what it's gonna be, and he's actually prepared to spend the money. And to, I already have driven this vehicle, and I already know what's going on here, but I want to show you guys the scenario. So many times it happens in shops where you, the customer, unknowingly gets raked over the coals really bad. So let's get this thing on the lift and let's take a look underneath. So like I said, the customer thinks that his Land Cruiser sounds like a Harley V-Rod or something crazy. It's, he says it doesn't sound right. Something's obviously wrong with my engine. So I hook my scan tool, my Autel scan tool to this thing to see if there's any codes, if there's any errors being logged. It's a blank slate, guys. Absolutely no codes. And I also took this thing on a road test. And when I drove it, the engine runs perfect. There's nothing wrong. It does sound weird, it sounds rumbly, but it's not the engine. The engine's got full power, it gets up and goes, it shifts like it should, it's full of oil, nice clean oil, there's no codes. There's nothing wrong with the engine. 
I have already taken a look underneath this and seen what this sound is. That's a disastrous sound. Let's start from here and do an inspection on the vehicle and work our way back. So I'll look at the condenser here, look at the radiator. You can kind of see the, the tank of the radiator there. There is some antifreeze here from when we pressure tested to make sure there was no issues there. But there's no leaks there going on. Take a look at the wheels here and the brakes. Nice and tight. The brakes are very thick, very beefy on this one. Shocks are in good shape. Move over to here. Uh-oh. A wheel bearing. We'll definitely have to look into that. That's not why it's here, but we definitely did just find that, didn't we? Okay. This is very odd. It's like someone has done an adjustment on the tie rod without taking the clamp loose and mangled up the boot. Well, I'll have to take the tension off of that. That's not good. Somebody's been here before, guys. I can tell. The brakes look okay there. So as you can see, many videos you've seen me go through and I don't hardly ever find anything. But it's not that I'm not looking because I've seen so many suspensions in my lifetime. When I see something, boom, I'm right on it. I know exactly there it is, just like we saw the boot. So let's keep going. Check the drive shaft and U-joints to the front. That's good. I don't see any leaks in there. It's all nice and clean. That doesn't surprise me though, it's a Toyota. Look at the bolts, they're still gold and shiny. I've mentioned this before. They have Toyotas come in the shop with 200,000 miles and the engine looks shiny and new. They build them that well. Transfer case doesn't have any leaks. Again, shiny and new. Let's check out this drive shaft here. It's a tiny bit of play in the splines. That could be greased or taken care of. But so many of the Land Cruisers or the LX470s, after they get age on them, they have driveline vibrations. And they, people chase it and it's balance the wheels and try this and try that. It's always the drive shafts. Either U-joints or the balance is out of whack or someone has replaced the U-joints. They didn't place the yokes in the proper phase. They put the splines back on and now it's out of balance. So always check that on one of these. Let's move our way back here. I don't see any leaks on the differential. Back brakes look good. It's nice and tight. Shocks are good. Brakes are good. Shocks are good. Sway bar links are good. Spare tires got air in it. Now the problem with this vehicle and why it's making its weird noise, let me show it to you. Look at this guys. I can put my screwdriver inside of the muffler. I don't mind tearing this up because I know I'm going to replace it. It doesn't matter. There's his noise. There's a metallic flapping noise. And there's the low rumbling Harley Davidson sound. I'll take a look under the hood. Another common issue on these Land Cruisers or LX470s is the radiator gets age on it and they crack. Usually right around here where you see this seam is, these lines. This one has 180,000 miles on it and I wouldn't be surprised if it has the original timing belt and water pump on it. We're definitely going to present that to the customer. Maybe, maybe it's been changed, but I've been through several of these that got 150, 180 and they've never been changed. These Toyota engines are awesome, but you still have to maintain them. You still have to do the timing belt and water pump. 
at the scheduled times. You can't just skip on it because it's a Toyota. So many people do. It's unfortunate, but this engine is in very good shape. There's nothing wrong with it. Let's take a look around the engine and see what we see. Power steering fluid's nice and full. I see tiny seepage from the valve cover gasket, but it's not really bad enough to, to replace yet. The radiator looks okay. This is from when we pressure tested earlier. It's not leaking. So he's in good shape there. Looks like it's recently had a uh, fan clutch put on it. Serpentine belt looks okay. Right at the full mark, it's clean oil, like I mentioned. Brakes are nice and full, clean, nice clean fluid. Now if this was an LX470, right in this cavity right here would be a suspension hydraulic system, a pump or the reservoir, which would fit right here. But being this is a Land Cruiser, it doesn't have that option. It just has standard struts and shocks on it, which would really be the way that I would prefer it. So you don't have to check the fluid there. It doesn't have the system. These battery terminals could be taken off and cleaned up. The battery seems to work fine. They just got a little bit of corrosion going on there. And this valve cover is not leaking at all. It's in good shape. Someone has written numbers on the coils painted with a paint marker, so they've probably put plugs on it before. You can see there's two and three, four. So very likely it's had at least spark plugs put on it. Those are all things when you open the hood that an experienced technician can take a glance at, a real fast glance, and start saying you've had your plugs replaced, you've had this replaced, this hasn't been done, that's been done. It takes a lot of years to, to have the, the eye for that. but. Again, like I said, I'm not seeing any serious issues with this engine at all. It's that muffler back there that's bad. It's blown out, it's rattling, it's rusting. It really, can, it really scared the customer. He thought, oh no, my engine's going out on me. Fortunately, that's not the case. His engine is perfectly fine. Let's close the hood. So we're gonna present the timing belt and water pump to the customer, see if it's been changed. It may have, it may not and the wheel bearing that we found, and the muffler that's blown out, and he'll be back in business. If it just ends up being a wheel bearing and a muffler, 500, 750, somewhere around there, he'll be back in business and on the road. But the scenario I want to present to you, and you need to be careful as a customer about this as well, is that you go into a mechanic shop and you've self-diagnosed your own vehicle, and you tell them, I think it needs a new engine. You may have just signed your own death warrant. A crooked shop, and unfortunately, a lot of shops today, that's common practice to say, hey, you know his muffler's just blown out, but this guy's prepared to spend money on an engine. Let's quote him an engine. They'll put a new muffler on it, charge you seven grand, and away you go. Because you had already told them, I'm ready to spend the money on an engine. All they have to do is make the call and say, yeah, it needs an engine. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. I hate to spend the money, but I gotta have my car running. And all it is is a blown out muffler. Be very, very careful what you say to the mechanic. Tell them you're, you do need to tell them the things you're experiencing. It's making a noise, it's leaking oil. But don't tell them what you think is wrong with it. Don't go on and say, I read on a forum that this and this and this and this could be wrong. Unfortunately, that's the mode of operation of most mechanic shops these days. Okay, yeah, we'll replace all those things. If you looked at Hoovy's 9-11 video where he took it to a dealership in Wichita and they got quoted way high, things that weren't even needed. Um, that just happens over and over. I have customers that come in the shop that have been quoted really high bills for major jobs and it never even needed the major work. It was something small. That hasn't happened one or two times, guys. It's happened probably 50 times in the past few years. I mean, we've been in this situation before when I, before I had my own shop and, or before I was as skilled to do the things that I do now. You, want, you need to spend money to get your car fixed, it's understood, but you don't want to burn your cash up for no reason. It's easy to say, oh, car wizard, not all shops are that way. 
But if you're unfamiliar with the shop you're going to, or you just don't know, it's better to err on the side of caution. Because if you say, I think it needs a new radiator, and it just needed a hose, they're going to put you in for a new radiator, and you're going to pay for it. One thing you could do is get a second opinion and kind of confirm what the first shop did with the second shop or person. It's kind of like going to the doctor. Sometimes you want to get a second opinion before you get a major operation done and kind of verify, yeah, that is the problem and it looks like a, I'm going to have to do this or that. So we're going to get this guy back on the road. It's not going to be horrendously thousands of dollars to fix his vehicle. He's probably going to be very excited because he didn't want to spend that kind of money. I knew when this vehicle came in and I saw it was just a muffler, I wanted to show you guys this scenario that happens a lot more than I'd like to admit at other places. Now I mentioned earlier in this video that these are really tough vehicles. These to there's Toyota Prados, there's Toyota Land Cruisers, there's all kind of different things in other countries that aren't even sold here. But keep in mind guys, we don't like terrorists, but even they know. They don't have time for breakdowns, they don't want to be towing their friends out of the mud or wherever they're at because their vehicle's breaking over and over. What do they drive? When you see them on the news and you see ISIS or the different terrorists, the horrible things that they're doing, what are they driving? Toyotas. Now, obviously I'm not advocating for terrorism. I hate that. But if they're driving Toyotas, there's a reason. They're really that good. They're not driving Denali's. They're not driving Ford Excursions. This is what they drive. So enough rant about Toyotas. If you're curious what kind of tools I use to fix Toyotas, check out my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click the subscribe button. We got many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.